Hello, I'm Phil Dolman and I feel like a game show host at the moment with this wheel spinning round here. I feel like I'm on Wheel of Fortune or something like that. But what this is, is a little tool, a rotating circle of fifths. Now when I'm teaching music, I often find that the thing I teach more than anything is about patterns, about how things go together, what chords go with other chords over and over again. I even wrote a book about it called How Songs Work. And I think an important step when you're playing your ukulele is when you want to move on from just following the pictures and start to understand what you're playing. Because what happens when you start to understand what you're playing is you start to be able to jam with people, play without the song sheets, play by ear, and even when you're thinking about writing your own songs maybe, you have some great pointers as to what chord might go next without a lot of tedious guessing or listening and trying to match up the chord you're playing with what you think someone else is playing. Now I'm going to be using this little tool, this rotating circle of fifths. Well, it's on the screen here, but the graphics I'm using here come from this, and you can make your own one at home to use along with this video. What you do is go to the link below in the description, you download this PDF and print it out, preferably on some thick paper or card. You chop it down the middle, and then your two halves, one of them, you cut out that odd shaped window, and on the other one, you'll have a circle that you can cut out, make a hole on the dot in the middle of both of them, and then just take a little brass paper fastener and put them together, and you will have, just like I have on screen there, a rotating circle of fifths tool that you can use to work out common patterns in songs. Now what we're going to be using is a system that's often called Nashville Numbers, where we replace the letter names of chords with numbers. Usually it's Roman numerals, and that's just to avoid any confusion with numbers that we might have in a chord name like G7. So we're replacing letters with letters. When we do this, we end up being able to talk about a pattern without fixing it to a key. Why is that useful? The song Twist and Shout, for example, could be thought of as a one, four, five song. What does that mean? Well, it just means the chord named after the first step of the scale, the fourth step of the scale, and the fifth step of the scale. On the fifth step, the V chord, I've also put a seven in brackets, and that's just because that chord is often played, though not always, but often played as a seventh chord. In the key of C, if we look on our circle here, we'll see that the one chord is C. I've spun it round, so the key I want to be in is under the Roman numeral one. The one chord is always the key you're in. The one chord is C, the four chord is F, and the five chord is G7. I wonder if you've ever played C, F, and G7. Yeah, they're, they're all over the place. Those three chords are in so many songs, in so many ukulele chord books, song books for clubs, things like that. So here we go. C, F, G7. Now that's twist and shout if I play it in that order, changing chord at those times, you know, two beats, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. That's twist and shout. That's also La Bamba. And those three chords, you might change the order of them. You might go one, C, the four chord F, back to the C, and then to the five chord G7. Hey, where did we go? Days when the rain came. So it's Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. Here's the thing. If you've got it written in your songbook as C's and F's and G7's, Somebody else might have it written in another club's songbook with different letter names. The problem with that is that if we have them written with different letter names in a different key, like A for example, so we'll spin our wheel round to A, our chords are now one chord A, four chord D, five chord E, and that's most likely going to be played as an E7, which is a bit of a relief for us ukulele players who don't like playing E. So we'd have A, B, 
D, E7. Now can you hear that that is still twist and shout? That's still the bamba. And if we change the order and go A, D, A, E7, it's still brown eyed girl. But those letter names don't look anything like the letter names we had in the key of C. So they're not obviously the same thing. Only they are if we think about them in Nashville numbers. They are one, four, one, five. And it doesn't matter what key we're in. Let's spin it round to G and do the same thing. G, C, G, D7. It's still brown eyed girl. And if we go G, C, D7, it's still twist and shout. This will happen wherever we spin that wheel round. So you can now play any of those songs you already know that just have C, F and G7 in any key. Pattern recognition like this is really important to playing by ear. And here's the great thing. You might think, well, I can't do this. I can't recognize these things. It's difficult to do. Well, it is at first. And you do start to recognize these patterns more as you play them more. But you all know what a 1-4-5 progression sounds like. Because since I mentioned to you earlier on, twist and shout, I bet you've all been hearing twist and shout in your head. If you haven't, take a few seconds now to just mentally play back the Beatles singing Twist and Shout. That's a 1-4-5 chord progression. What key is it in? I don't know. Until I go and listen to the Beatles one myself and fix it to a key, the key the Beatles played it in, I don't know and it doesn't matter. Because we can still recognise that song as Twist and Shout. And it doesn't matter what key the Beatles played it in, they played it in the key that best suited them for whatever reason. Maybe their voices, or maybe that's just the way they originally wrote it on their instruments. But that doesn't mean we have to play it in that key. Now that's just one pattern. And if you've printed out your little circle of fifths, you'll see that at the bottom on the front here, I've given a few ideas of different patterns you can try and songs that use that pattern. So have a play around with those too. Now in that little top part of the window, you'll also see three minor chords underneath our one, four and five chords. We have the two chord, the six chord and the three chord. And those are lowercase Roman numerals and that's showing that they're minor chords. And you can try messing around with those six chords at the top there because all of those chords go together in the key of whatever is under one. So in the key of C, you will find your C, your F, your G, which might well be a G7, but you'll also find a D minor, an A minor, and an E minor. And they all go together a lot. You don't have to play them all. If you were to try just adding the six chord, so in the key of C, that would be A minor, and you went C, A minor, F, G7. That's a very common chord sequence. That's one, six, four, five. One, six, four, five. Let's try it in another key. Spin the wheel around to A. One, F sharp minor. And if you're not sure about any of these chords, there's another link down below that will show you how to play every chord in every key. You can download a little chart for those. But you can go from A to F sharp minor by just adding your ring finger on the second fret of your E string and keeping those first two down from the A. A, F sharp minor, D, E7. One, six, four, five. It's the same song. It's Blue Moon. It's Heart and Soul. Very common. Switch the order around and maybe don't play that five chord as a seven. And we can get a whole load of other songs. Let's go back to C. And instead of going C, A minor, F, G, seven, go C, one, G, the five chord, A minor, the six chord, and F, the four chord. That is No Woman, No Cry. Can you feel the love tonight from the Lion King? It's so many songs. 
Knowing these little patterns mean that you can just play these songs by ear and eventually you'll hear a song, think it sounds familiar and be able to pick up your uke and play it, but play it in any key. Now we've got a bit of an odd little sticky out bit on our window that goes around the side there. And you might have noticed that the Roman numerals for those are the same as the Roman numerals for our three minor chords, but they're not minor, they're uppercase. We have our three chord, we have our six chord, we have our two chord, but they're uppercase, meaning they're not minor chords, they're major. And these ones also have the possibility of a seventh after them. These ones don't belong, strictly speaking, in the key that we're in but they're very common chords that we do play. If you try going from the one chord, and we'll do it in C to start with, and jump all the way round to the three chord, but not minor, and play it as a seventh, you'll see that that's an E. Play it as an E7. Then we're gonna to go to the six chord, and it's going to be an A, and that's gonna be an A7. And then we go to the two chord, which is going to be a D7. Then we go to the five chord that we've already had because it's in our little group of six at the top. Play that as a seven, G7, and C. We get this, C, E7, the three chord, A7, the six chord, D7, the two chord, G7, the five chord, and back to the one chord. Yep, yeah, it's five foot two. Now you probably played five foot two in the key of C, but if we spin the wheel around so that F is at the top, as you can see now, we could play five foot two like this. F, A7, D7, G7, C7, and F. And lots and lots of songs use that same pattern, either for the whole song or for a small section of it. And that's the most important thing to take away from this. I'm not showing you one song, even though I might say Five Foot Two, or I might say Twist and Shout, or Brown Eyed Girl. They're just examples of the many, many thousands of songs that use those same chord patterns. A common jazz pattern to play is one, six, two, five. Now, we'll do it in C, then we'll do it in another key. In C, that would be C. Our sixth chord this time is gonna be our lowercase one. A minor, that's our sixth chord. Our two chord is also going to be minor. D minor. And our five chord is going to be played as a seventh, G7. So C, A minor, D minor, G7, or one, six, two, five. Very, very common in jazz. I got rhythm, I got music. But in I got rhythm, we have a separate section of the song. Some people in pop music might call it a middle eight. In jazz, we tend to call it a bridge. The bridge of I got rhythm is this. E7, old man trouble, A7, I don't mind him, D7, you won't find him at my door. We've just gone around that section of the window that sticks out a little bit and we've gone three, six, two, five, but this time they're all seventh chords, not minor chords. Put those two common patterns together and you can play I Got Rhythm. The thing about I Got Rhythm is it's been recycled and reused throughout jazz. Thousands of jazz songs use both of those patterns or one of them or the other. So when you come to learn songs that might look very, very complicated and you want to play with people who are playing jazz, it's important to remember that a lot of the time they're using the same old patterns. Let's try the 1-6-2-5 pattern that we have a C, A minor, D minor, G7 that's everywhere and try it in a key we've not had before. Let's spin the wheel around so that B flat is at the top. I know, nasty key, but a very common key in jazz. 
what would it be in B flat? Well, we just read off those Roman numerals. One would be B flat, six would be G minor, two would be C minor, and five would be F, but we're gonna add that seventh and make it an F7. And can you hear that still, I got rhythm? I got rhythm. I got music. What about the bridge to I Got Rhythm? It went three, six, two, five, but they were all just played as seventh chords. Some of those ones that we've been using minor before aren't minor now. The three chord, you read it off on your chart, is going to be D7. Oh man, trouble! What comes next? The six chord. The six chord will be G, but it's not minor this time. It's a G7. I don't mind him. Then we need the two chord, again played as a seventh, that's C7. You won't find him. Then the five chord that we had before, again played as a seventh, F7. At my door. So we've got the A section. I got rhythm. And we've got the B section. Old man trouble. I don't mind him. You won't find him at my door. And they're so common in jazz, it's good to be able to play them in a bunch of keys. So what I'm going to do for the rest of this video, just for a couple of minutes, is I'm going to disappear and on this side of the screen I'm going to put up some common chord patterns that you might have heard in songs in Nashville numbers and I'll spin the wheel round to a key and I'll play the song in that key and you can try playing it along with me. Key of G, one, four, one, five, and the five chord will be played as a seventh. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Roman numerals and they're all played as seventh chords except for our one chord. So we're going to play D, B7, E7, A7. One, two, three, four. We're going to play one, five, six, four. The six is lowercase, so it's minor, and we're not going to add the seven to the five chord this time, we're just going to play it as a straightforward major chord. So our chords will be one, F, five, C, six, D minor, and four, B flat. That's the chord sequence to I'm Yours by Jason Mraz, only in the key of F. Here we go. One, two, three, four. There are many more chord patterns, but hopefully you'll get the idea that lots and lots of songs, even though they're very, very different, are made up of a few core ingredients. And with this circle of fifths tool, 
you'll be able to find out the patterns behind your songs and then start to understand how they're working and reuse them in other songs or in your own songs or in order to just jam or play by ear. If you are really interested in finding out lots more chord patterns from songs and talking about them in Nashville numbers like this, then my book, How Songs Work on the Ukulele, might just interest you. And there's a link below to where you can find that. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been helpful and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.